This is the artificial intelligence voice of Jordan Peterson narrating this pod slice summary of the Jordan Peterson podcast. Throughout this discussion between Jordan Peterson and Dr. Sarah Hill, they explore various aspects related to women's hormones, their reproductive choices, and the implications of these choices on their relationships and general societal roles. And see, the conversation delves into how the introduction of birth control and the ability for women to control their reproductive decisions potentially signifies a significant shift in societal dynamics and causes a re-examination of the definition of a woman. Dr. Hill's background in evolutionary biology informs her perspective, where she explains how sex differences are fundamentally rooted in reproductive roles. Biologically, males are defined by smaller mobile reproductive cells, gametes, while females exhibit larger stationary gametes, indicating a greater minimum investment in offspring. This basic biological difference sets the stage for the evolution of gender differences across sexually reproducing species. The discussion further delves into the psychological implications of this disparity. Women's heightened sensitivity to negative emotions post-puberty is connected to their increased investment in offspring. Women aren't just more sensitive due to their smaller physical size or sexual vulnerability. It is suggested that their heightened alertness to threat comes from the need to protect their dependent infants. Being overly sensitive to threat resulting in cases of false positives is considered advantageous in the context of taking care of an infant. The conversation extends to explore the concept of women's vulnerability to manipulation from other. They argue that the cost of being misled, especially sexually, is considerably higher for women due to the extensive investment in pregnancy, reputational risks, elevated likelihood of infant mortality, and danger presented by childbirth. Dr. Sarah Hill and Peterson then discuss the concept of men who adopt short-term mating strategies characterized by traits such as psychopathy, narcissism, manipulative nature, and sadism. These characteristics are often more pronounced among men compared to women, but are particularly noticeable in men focusing on short-term mating. The dialogue ends with Peterson asking about the potential presence of literature documenting the difference in responses to short-term mating instances between men and women. In their conversation, Dr. Sarah Hill and Jordan Peterson extend their exploration into the psychological implications of women's responses after engaging in short-term relationships, often characterized as one-night stands. They bring up studies in sexual regret literature where findings show that women tend to regret the short-term mating opportunities they engaged with, whereas men regret those they did not take advantage of. This indicates that the sexual regrets of men cluster around missed opportunities. While for women, it is about individuals they wish they had not engaged with. Expanding the discussion, they venture into the understanding of how personality attributes, especially neuroticism and agreeableness, could serve as predictors of post-short-term sex regret. Women who are more feminine or those who exhibit more compassion, politeness, an inclination towards bonding are identified to be more likely to show postcoital regret. Speaking from an evolutionary perspective, women are thought to experience more sexual regret when the costs are higher, such as the risk of reputational damage from engaging in a short-term mating strategy. A potential study design highlighted could consider personality attributes, such as dark tetrad traits, narcissism, Machiavellianism, psychopathy, and sadism, and the number of days variation from maximum fertility as predictors of post-short-term coital regret. Discussing the definition of a woman, the segment of the podcast orbits around the concept that the defining characteristic of a female is to be a member of a sexually reproducing species that invests greatly at the level of the gamut rather than just chromosomal difference. Both Peterson and Hill argue that these biological and behavioral mechanisms which define differences between men and women echo at every biological level and are vital to understand even cognitively. They touch upon how men understand the relationship between their success and attractiveness to women, further dwelling into the differences and resemblances in the motivations between men and women. As per them, women are not only drawn to wealth, but use wealth as a marker for competence. They're essentially seeking the capacity to generate and share wealth, indicatively making it about productivity as well as generosity. Men on the other side, V for competence-based reputation, which in turn seems to increase their attractiveness to women. Their insightful dialogue navigates through the end 
with a deeper delve into evolutionary perspectives, touching upon lecking behavior observed commonly in non-human animals where males gather to attract mates, drawing parallels, they identify a similar tendency in humans where aligning with high-performing men benefits others due to the attraction of women towards competency. This interaction between men and women occurs within a complex web of biological, social, and psychological context reflective of the evolved structures of human mating strategies. Within this dialogue between Dr. Hill and Jordan Peterson, they address the psychological dynamics that characterize mother-child relationships, societal pressures associated with motherhood, as well as the intricate interplay between individual identity and parental responsibilities. Peterson proposes that excessive parental attention can hinder a child's growth and the development of survival skills. As parents strive to protect and shield their children from hardship, they may unintentionally obstruct the children's ability to navigate the realities of the world independently, leading to poor coping mechanisms. Further dissecting this, they delve into the nuances of the mother's role, acknowledging how historically women had to balance motherhood with various survival duties. Nowadays, where survival tasks are less demanding and survival rates higher, a parental focus has shifted more onto the child. This transition, while born out of increased resources and societal evolution, can lead to overinvestment, which can impact the child negatively. Peterson explores an interesting paradox within a parenting approach, aiming to balance immediate relief of a child's distress versus facilitating a child's adaptation and growth. A parent's instinct to cease any discomfort their child is experiencing can clash with the necessity of allowing this discomfort to instill resilience and coping mechanisms in the child. They propose that a child once autonomous should be allowed, to an extent, to navigate their distress independently, promoting adaptability. On the topic of sex differences, the pair proposed that the temporal focus in dealing with a child's discomfort could be differently prioritized between sexes, with mothers potentially focusing on immediate alleviation and fathers on long-term adaptability. However, this proposal is highly speculative and is not backed by concrete research. The discussion concludes with an intriguing speculation that societal changes in family sizes and child spacing may exacerbate the weaning conflict where mothers struggle with the transition from an immediate caretaker to a guide facilitating independent growth. This offers a fresh angle in understanding the dynamics and challenges of modern parenting. In this nuanced discourse between Jordan Peterson and Dr. Sarah Hill, the conversation dynamically treads through a plethora of topics such as the roles of genders in parenting and academia, the rising phenomenon of childlessness among women, and the crossroads at which career orientation stands against societal expectations and innate drives. Dr. Hill addresses the diversification of academia's workforces and provides insight into her postulate that men seeking career stability might be more inclined towards academia compared to women who are potentially driven by flexibility as they juggle professional and domestic responsibilities. Respecting this further, she adds that this choice might attract a specific phenotypes of male academics perceived as more dependent and less competitive. This suggests an intricate relationship between personal drive, societal perception, and roles pursued within the workforce. Ferguson introduces another element into the equation, the maternal orientation towards students and the potential for this developing feedback loop to consequently attract more dependent men. This further aggregates the maternal gestalt creating a spiraling academic climate that could potentially intensify existing biases and create new ones. Dr. Hill points out the growing concern with regard to microaggressions, cultural sensitivities, and an overall change in the academic landscape, where a previously unfettered joy of teaching has been replaced by a constant fear of potential fallout over sensitive issues. This underlines a significant shift in the educational climate and the increasing complexity of navigating its landscape. Delving deeper into the consequences of the modern revolution in women's rights, the conversation veers towards the diminishing cost of sexual interplay for women due to societal advancements like contraceptive accessibility, while the ramifications indeed champion women's independence and planning capabilities. It appears to come with unforeseen consequences, most notably an increase in childlessness amongst women reaching their 30s, the idea of delayed or discarded parenthood against the pursuit of career advancements has brought a unique mix of liberation and regret to the modern woman's doorstep. 
setting the stage for deeper explorations into the evolving dynamics of gender roles in society. And the conversation between Jordan Peterson and Dr. Sarah Hill pivots to dive deeply into the biological and social impacts of emancipation of women. They touch on how societal progress relies on harnessing intellectual capabilities of women, an advantage unheard of before the 1960s. They highlight statistics that clearly indicate education of women is the best predictor of their children's educational attainment, painting uh, an understandable landscape of global economic development where women's rights are prioritized. Yet the conversation harbors an awareness of the escalating societal costs of this emancipation, including rising celibacy among young people in Japan, decline in sex among youth in the West, and the struggle women face in finding long-term relationships. As the discourse ambles ahead, Dr. Hill candidly shares her personal experiences using birth control, crediting it for successfully juggling her academic degrees, setting up her research lab, and planning her family. Illness illuminates her stance on the subject. While it's challenging to make blanket statements regarding the benefits of the pill offsetting the cost, individual experiences are crucial in determining its value. She focuses on the importance of educating women about their fertility, citing the lack of accurate information as a pressing concern. Curtis and shared anecdotes from his clinical practice working with high achieving women. He noticed a consistent trend where women, upon reaching the pinnacle of their careers, typically sacrifice their extensive work hours for a more balanced lifestyle. This inclination towards family importance over career success further underscores the differing reward structures for men and women, revealing interesting shift in priorities that are primarily governed by a mix of evolutionary history and societal conditioning. The thread of conversation veers towards disproportionality in the sexes at the highest level of scientific pursuits, though there is an agreement that while there are more male super geniuses, it doesn't preclude the possibility of the best scientist being female. The dialogue provides an interesting perspective on the complex intertwining of biological predispositions, societal conditioning, career trajectories, and personal choices. The discussion between Jordan Peterson and Dr. Sarah Hill carries on with profound insight into the biological aspect of hormonal balancing and its psychological effects. In this part of the conversation, they delve into the idea of categorizing hormones as an entity separate from us, while in reality, hormones are an integral part of our psychological makeup. Dr. Hill illustrates this concept with an analogy of gears and sprockets, where hormones are part of the machinery creating individual preferences, personality traits, and even food choices. This idea challenges the common dichotomy between our hormone-controlled and hormone-free selves, promoting the integration and acceptance of hormones in our personal identity. Dr. Hill also urges conversation on testosterone clinics, drawing awareness to the ill-informed decisions many make to adjust their hormonal profiles, not reckoning with the potential changes to one's identity. The altering of hormones isn't just a biological transformation. It's a psychological metamorphosis too. Her discussion shifts into the realm of women's health specifically the hormonal impacts of contraceptive pills. Dr. Hill identifies hormones as expensive and evolutionarily significant traits selected for promoting survival and reproduction. Suppressing, decreasing, or minimizing hormonal changes can fundamentally alter a woman's biological and psychological experience. For instance, hormone levels fluctuate in a cyclic pattern throughout the course of a woman's menstrual cycle with high levels of estrogen prompting numerous changes geared towards conception. Ironically, the very exaltation of specific biological traits during the dramatic rise in estrogen levels, affecting the manner a woman appears, smells, and sounds, is what birth control pills suppress simultaneously. The post-ovulation phase introduces progesterone, adjusting women's bodies for possible pregnancy and leading to physical sensations such as increased hunger and sleepiness, thereby altering behavioral attitudes like fewer tendencies to risky behavior. Dr. Hill explains how these hormonal states change based on predictable cycles, arguing against the misguided perception that hormonal cycling in women is unpredictable. Women taking birth control pills receive a consistent daily dose of synthetic estrogen and progesterone, essentially simulating a state where conception isn't possible. This hormonal stasis unknowingly transforms a woman's perceptions, including her interest in sex and her preference in men.
how this line of discussion further expands to encapsulate profound societal implications. Firstly, it questions whether societal norms recognize the cyclicity of women's hormonal states, or do they simply equate normalcy with the male hormonal path? Secondly, the differences in hormonal dynamics between men and women, when misconstrued or overlooked, could perpetuate underlying tension in societal relationships. The broader implications of this discourse put the spotlight on the need for increased education and discourse on hormonal variability, its psychological effects, and societal impacts. This in-depth discussion between Jordan Peterson and Dr. Sarah Hill delves further into the crucial interaction between hormones, personal choices, and societal norms. The discourse begins where Indubel points out that high estrogen levels are associated with women developing increased preferences for masculine traits. However, the continuous dosage of synthetic estrogen and progesterone included in birth control causes a reduction in this preference, actually leaning more towards lesser masculine attributes. A fascinating revelation is the potential effect on relationship satisfaction when a woman discontinues her hormonal contraception. Studies suggest that it could bring a potential surge in attraction if their partner was initially chosen to be attractive when on the pill, or a steep decline if the mate was chosen less attractive. Essentially, halting the pill may intensify the outcomes of their initial choices. The intriguing part of this dialogue touches on the impact these findings may have upon society. Peterson suggests that, based on recent studies, it seems that the women significantly affected by hormonal alterations may be driven to engage politically. The conversation then transitions into the realm of men's health. It discusses declining levels of testosterone, which in turn might be influenced by societal trends that have increasingly seen men taking on more traditional female roles in terms of household work and childcare. It is important to note, explains Dr. Hill, that testosterone is not solely a hormone of masculinity, but also of mating effort, which can decrease in a long-term committed relationship or with the presence of young children. This natural shift is adaptive, functional, and temporary. Dr. Hill also examines the impact of societal expectations on individuals and relationships. The traditional roles of men and women are now blurring, with each gender expected to balance the roles traditionally associated with the other. This creates a conflicted situation where women experience a drop in sexual attraction towards their male partners who take up household chores and caregiving roles, which are considered effeminate activities. But the hidden component in this complex social dynamic, however, is how these shifts can affect societal norms, the impact on political motivations, relationships, and shift in gender roles, all influenced by hormonal fluctuations, manifest deeper societal consequences than initially realized. It's a reminder that understanding the complexities of human biology isn't just about personal well-being. It's also a window into our societal health and cultural norms. The dialogue between Jordan Peterson and Dr. Sarah Hill continues to examine birth control pills effects on women's hormonal balance. They discuss the concern over potential adverse health outcomes of long-term use of hormonal contraception particularly during adolescence, an issue not widely communicated to users or their parents. Dr. Hill warns of an increased risk of developing serious mood disorders, like depression over a lifetime. Even after discontinuation of consoles, she notes synthetic hormones in birth control do not precisely mimic naturally occurring ones. For instance, synthetic progesterone or progestins are mostly synthesized from testosterone, sometimes lack specificity and may bind to other hormone receptors. This nonspecific binding can cause the body to essentially exist in a state of chronic stress, which can lead to the blunting of cortisol response, the body's stress response. Harrison and Dr. Hill also scrutinize the potential psychological ramifications of this hormonal change, particularly hinting at the possibility it could interfere with emotional memory encoding and the therapeutic patient's response on hormonal contraception being treated for PTSD. Harrison further extrapolates these findings and suggests that women using the pill may struggle with the ability to adapt to new situations, an insight that may be concerning, considering the fact that these pills are often prescribed to teenage girls, turning to potential alternatives for contraception. They discuss the push for male birth control. 
However, both Peterson and Dr. Hill indicate most men may not be willing to tolerate the adverse side effects to lower testosterone levels to avoid producing sperm. This once again highlights the gap in contraceptive options, where women mostly bear the burden of side effects through the use of hormonal contraceptives, often without complete understanding or patience to endure the long-term ramifications. As the dialogue unfolds, Peterson and Dr. Hill underscore the idea that birth control pills serve a purpose but do come with significant trade-offs, trade-offs that should be known to women when they decide to start hormonal contraception. Dr. Sarah Hill emphasizes the need for better contraceptive methods and urges a call to action for drug manufacturers, investors, and policymakers to make advancements in contraceptive technology. Having personal experience with hormonal birth control, Dr. Hill becomes introspective, considering its effects on her teenage daughter. She reveals that she would have second thoughts about her daughter starting hormonal birth control before the age of 19 due to possible interruption in brain development. Her concerns stem from studies indicating adverse impacts are more reversible post-19, posing lesser risk. Yet, she acknowledges the need for contraception in preventing unwanted teenage pregnancies, which are linked to increased poverty rates among single mothers. Discussions extend to sex education in society with Peterson highlighting our collective failure to educate young people about the potential risks and complexities around short-term sexual behavior, primarily when influenced by birth control, a clear understanding of the neurobiological, psychological realities and long-term mating strategies tied to personality needs incorporation in sex education, he argues. Both Peterson and Dr. Hill examined the necessity for honest discussions about sexual development and the realistic timelines for selecting long-term partners. They highlight the finite window of fertility for women, stressing the importance of time in making the decisions. In closing, Dr. Hill reflects on her personal journey with birth control, revealing that she, despite being a psychologist, had been oblivious to the potential effects of hormonal birth control on her psychology. She further highlights this as a collective blind spot alluding to society's contradictory reactions to birth control and anabolic steroids, despite both having non-specific effects throughout the body. The dialogue concludes with a call to recognize the complexities and unintended consequences of hormonal birth control and the need for a more informed, mature, and productive discussion on the topic, acknowledging that with any beneficial technology, there comes a price.